Hi everyone, Ian here. So today we're going to be talking about ChatGPT, which is a chatbot from OpenAI. And it uses natural language processing and machine learning models to chat in a conversational way. So it delivers responses based on you typing in input and it responding as if you're having a conversation with it. And this has been the subject of a lot of videos on the internet recently. It's currently in a research release phase, as you can see here on our desktop, um, which means it's free for everyone to use and so there's a lot of YouTube videos um, using it and demonstrating how it could be used. Uh, and I wanted to cover today something that I think it's particularly good at, which is web scraping, and particularly in web scraping in Python, and how you can use it to generate custom web scrapers really quickly. So um, yeah, so it's probably best just to jump straight into a chat session and check out what we can do with it. So this is ChatGPT. We can jump straight in and we can ask, um, here we've got an example, how do I make HTTP requests in JavaScript? I'm gonna demonstrate with, how do I make uh, HTTP request in Python. And it'll come back with a response and it's saying to use HTTP requests, so the request library, which is um, a library that I would probably default to doing anything. It's, it's one of the most common ones that we use in Python. And you see we've got this code here that we can literally just copy and paste into a site. And in fact, actually, it's elaborating further and saying you can do other types of requests with it. So rather than just a get request, you can post data back as well. So this is kind of way it works. You can see that now it's changed our chat's uh, description to HTTP requests in Python. Um, and the first question I think I'm going to ask it, uh, so for reference, we are looking at this site, which is um, to scrape, which gives us a couple of examples of sites that we can scrape. This is books to scrape. So these are sites that allow us to scrape data from them. And I'm going to refer to this in my chat GPT question. So if I do a new chat and say, how do I scrape? data from this site. In fact, let's start with that in fact. So it says you use a web scraping tool, it passes the response, and you can see that it's not instant, it is kind of going away, thinking about it and delivering response. And this is great. This is, you know, it's telling us instructions of how we would go in scrape this information but it's not giving us code and it's telling us also to respect the terms and conditions of the websites that we're visiting so it obviously puts that in at the end so that you may not be allowed to do this so if i elaborate further and I'll ask it give me a code example in python to scrape the book data from So now it's actually drilling down and giving me a actual example with Beautiful Soup. Beautiful Soup is a web scraping library, um, very commonly used in Python. And you can see it's giving us what looks like actual code to go and get this data. Now, ordinarily, what you'd need to do is go to the site and actually go off, inspect um, the elements within it, and in fact that's being brought up over here, um, and try and figure out the correct um, divs and elements etc in order to get this data, and that can be time consuming and a bit of a pain, but you can see that it's gone off and actually delivered this back, which given us the title and the price straight away. So it what I'm going to do is copy that and try and run it straight off the bat. So I have a Python uh, project already, and in this I've already installed requests and beautiful soup, so we don't need to worry about that. 
and I've enabled the virtual environment um, that's using those modules. So if you take the code that we've been given with all these comments as well and try and run that and just see what it does. So Python scrape. And you can see that it's just come straight back with all the data that we want. So it's given us the title, the price, the rating out of five on, on that five star um, review there. And that's just saved us a whole bunch of time, like going off and finding that. Um, you can see that it's missed out some of the days. So we don't have the, say, image and the availability. So we could go back and ask it uh, to include a link to those things, include that data within it. So include the image and where the, the book is in stock. And in fact, I'm going to be a bit more specific about that and say it's data. So it goes back and it is updating the example that it's already given us. And hopefully it will include that data. And what it's doing here as well is explaining quite, you know, pretty well of what it's going off and doing. And so if you don't understand, um, it's, you know, it's providing a really useful answer. So this is really valuable to um, us as a developer, obviously. So we've got title, price, rating, image ill, and availability. So even called it availability there, where I've asked it for whether the book's in stock. So let's go and copy that code and see if that works. Okay, let's clear this down and just run that again. And it has worked. Um, some of that might, so the availability data looks like it might need to be trimmed down because it's got a lot of um, white space there. But we've effectively got everything that we've asked for. Um, and you can see we've got the image earl there as well. And yeah, this can save us a lot of time. So this, this example is fairly convoluted, I suppose, because um, books to scrape it's fairly well known within the scraping world. Um, if we were to use something like, say, Hacker News, which is a well-known um, site for developers and startups, etc. How do I scrape the posts from Use the Y Combinator using Python and Beautiful. So, so we can be a little bit more specific about. So again, it's asking us, or in fact telling us to install Beautiful Super and Request, which we've already done. And this time it's actually split out uh, the answer into a number of different steps. And again, it's saying it can be against the terms of service of some websites. Um, so I can ask it to rephrase this, rephrase as a single code example. And it's basically put all those steps together. I don't need to copy the individual ones and it's delivered it as a single thing. So we can be a bit more specific when we start the conversation and say, actually, we want a single code example that does, etc. does uh, what we've asked it to do. And in fact, let's go and test this as well. So it's going off to find the title, and that is it on this one. So let's run that, see if it works. Uh, now that's interesting, because it actually failed. So there's actually two reasons why this originally failed. I've actually regenerated it, and I've got a version now that works. So I'll show you that working. Um, you can see that it pulls down all the titles and links that we're after. Um, it's been able to regenerate that and create it. Part of the reason why it struggles slightly, I think, is... Um, so there's something else that I asked it to do, which was look at point data and the comments. And you can see on this that actually it's a 
table-based layout, which is very much a no-no for probably the last 20 years in uh, web development. Uh, you shouldn't you should be using CSS for that sort of stuff, but this is Hacker News and yes, it's existed forever. Um, there's one much larger issue here that uh, is probably not obvious from what I've shown so far. And I didn't realize until I started doing this video and somebody picked me up on is that actually this is not reaching out to the internet right now. It's not when we're asking it to scrape, it is not scraping the internet. It is it's not going and inspecting that data. It is actually at that web page. It is going and looking at the train data that's been given through till 2021. So Hacker News, it already knows about because it exists in its training set. Um, if you were to put a site in from this year, it would not have that site and it would not understand how to parse it. So if I pull up this example, which is one, this is Silicon Prices. So if we go and visit this. This is a site that I've built in 2022. Um, which is just shows prices of um, items, so we're good to hack it, we're good to scrape it, hack it. So I've asked it to scrape product data from here. So if you put that same uh, into the script there and try and run it, if I ask it to run it, it's not pulling anything back. And you can see from this, I've ju I just asked it, if you look in the uh, prompt here, to scrape product data from here. And it's coming back with a confident enough answer saying, you can scrape data. Here's an example of how you could use it. Um, and if you look at it, it's looking for things with H2 elements and something with a span of a class price. Now, if we look at that page and that item, which is the price, there is no span in here that's marked price. And in fact, um, it's also looking for a class of product, which is a div. There is no product class on that. So it's not live going out and looking at this stuff. It is using a training set that it already has or the training data that it's already got from up to 2021 um, to inform it to how to build these scrapes. And if you ask it to scrape a site that it doesn't know about, it possibly will come back with a confident enough answer. It does this for other stuff too. So if you ask it uh, for um, random facts about um, things that aren't real, it will quite often come back and make stuff up. And I think there's been a few changes. We're on the chat GPT 15, uh, December 15 version here, where they've had to uh, make amendments to factor that in. Anyway, so yeah, just be aware of that. that this isn't going to work for all sites. And obviously if a site has changed its structure, in the last year, which is possible, it's quite likely, I suppose, it's basically not going to give you an answer that's going to work. So, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Even though it's not able to reach out to the internet, I think this is quite a useful way of quickly putting together um, scrapers and code. Obviously, in Python, we can ask it to do other things as well. I'll have more ChatGPT stuff in the future, probably. I look forward to seeing how uh, it progresses and how we can make use of it in our, as developers. Um, if you like the video, please give it a th thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Both those things really help me out. Um, and I will speak to you soon in a new video. All right, bye for now.